Good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. During the next hour, we're going to explore the vast world of Office 365 and how your business can leverage Office 365 to its full potential. My name is Zach Saltzman. I'm the Solution Services Manager here at FMT Consultants. I officially began my IT consulting career back in 2005. I had the opportunity to run my own company as well as co-found another IT startup. And I've been with FMT for over three and a half years. Most people are surprised to learn that I majored in English from the University of Colorado, but I've been a lifelong computer guy and always have had a big passion for technology. So before we jump in, let's take a quick poll and you'll see it pop up on your GoToWebinar dashboard. And we're asking, what's your role at your current organization? So Office 365 is a lot of things, uh, sometimes even an overwhelming amount of productivity tools at your fingertips, email, collaboration, the ability to work from anywhere, instant communication, rich audio and video meetings, machine learning, analytics and business intelligence, and the list really goes on and on. But to me, there are four core principles of Office 365 which make it a best-in-class solution. And those are simplicity, flexibility, power, and reach. So I'd like to start off with a story. Uh, I was flying back from FMT's leadership retreat a few weeks ago, and I had a connecting flight on my way home and didn't have much time to catch that, that connection. And as I had stepped off the, the plane from my first flight, I turned the corner in the concourse and I saw one of those huge wide halls that seemed just to go on forever and ever. And so I started heading down towards my connecting gate. And of course, the first moving walkway was out of order. There were yellow signs in front of it and tape cordoning it off. And so I was a little bit disappointed. I was there lugging my shoulder bag and dragging my suitcase along. I was hungry and I needed to make a pit stop, use the restroom. But obviously, I didn't want to miss my flight. Didn't want to give up my good boarding position either since I was flying on Southwest. So I wanted to make sure I got to my gate early. So as I'm walking along down that endless hall, I started thinking about the choices I was going to have to make. I knew I was going to have to probably eliminate something. Is it going to be not stopping to get a snack so I can take some food on my flight? You know, obviously I wasn't going to skip skip going to the restroom. So I'm thinking about that as I keep walking. Luckily, I see the second and third moving walkways, and that's just how long this, this hall was, that they were in service. And as I stepped on those moving walkways, I almost felt like I was now flying towards my connecting gate, which was really great. So if you can imagine the long and wide halls as your days, weeks, and months, your time in the office, you never seem to have enough time to get everything done, right? And your goals always are seemingly far off in the distance and you're forced to make choices all the time. You have to give up this or that, choose what to eliminate in order to, to fit things into your timeline and into your budget. So now, if you imagine Office 365 as that moving walkway, it's propelling you towards your goals. It's saving you time. It's making the path for you easier and far less strenuous. And so what we're really talking about here is the power of Office 365. So hopefully you've all had a chance to respond to the poll. I'm gonna go ahead and close it out so that we can see the results. So we're gonna be talking about, as I mentioned, the benefits of Office 365 and the Microsoft Cloud. And we're gonna focus on current hot button issues like security, making it easier for people to access information and also making it easier to protect information, bring your own device or BYOD, and getting started with migrating your business to Office 365. If you have any questions, please feel free to type them into the chat window throughout the session. We have a moderator monitoring the chat and we'll answer any questions that you may have at the end of the session during our Q&A. So the idea of modern biz it comes from the stuff that all of us probably do or strive to do on a regular basis in our jobs. It's things like growing efficiently. We don't want to grow too fast where we have what we call speed wobbles. You want to connect with your customers, which is basically selling. Uh, you want to safeguard your business, which to me is probably the most overlooked aspect. And of course, you want to be able to be productive and work from anywhere. 
So it's pretty simple. These ideas aren't exactly rocket science. So in terms of your company's IT operations, some of the questions you're thinking about or you should be asking yourself and your executive team are, what's your mobile strategy as a company? Do you even have one? What about bring your own device? And is it sort of like a wild west in your company with people using whatever kind of devices they want with no policies? And so how do you manage all of that? How do you manage those devices? And have you ever had someone lose their personal cell phone that was chock full of company data? What do you do then? And how about this one? I bet everyone would probably answer yes to this question since it's a fundamental part of every business. And that is, is there information in your company that's sensitive in nature, like intellectual property or IP, for example? And can you tell me who has access to that data? And how do you know that? So let's jump into the first pillar of modern biz. And that's grow efficiently. So Office 365 in the cloud not only means that you have Microsoft experts running and securing your software and data, but also that you stay on the cutting edge. Every single piece of Office 365 cloud is running the most up-to-date version available. So I don't really think any of our in-house IT departments, and I know certainly I'm included in that statement, can boast that uh, with the rapid change in the, tech, in the technology landscape. And when these software updates happen in Office 365, they're well planned out, and they basically eliminate any downtime that you would normally suffer from a traditional upgrade or a traditional rollout. So an example of that is this email that I would receive, and it tells me that my CRM online organization will be upgraded to the latest version. And if you read through, you can see that it also provides the version number information, which is good to know for the technical folks. It lets me know there won't be any impact to my system, and it even goes so far as to detail out the schedule for the update. So this is what's constantly happening in the background, and you can see that this is actually a weekly service update for Microsoft Dynamics CRM Online. So you get the, the picture that there's constant updates happening in the background without any interaction, without really any downtime or impact on our business. So businesses grow efficiently by staying on the bleeding edge of technology, not by using last generation's tools and certainly not by losing productivity due to unexpected downtime. So in addition to updates and upgrades, Office 365 automates nearly all the routine maintenance across the board, including for Exchange, SharePoint, OneDrive, and Skype, just to name a few of the solutions. Logs are checked, databases are tuned, backups are taken. I won't bore you with the whole list that goes on and on, but you get, a, you get an idea of the number of tasks that are being taken care of for you. So this allows you, especially small and medium-sized businesses, to focus your IT team on other more important projects and initiatives, projects that are probably more unique to your industry uh, and your organization's rising place within that industry, hopefully, and not spending more time than necessary managing commodities like email and file sharing. So really, in the end, the automatic updates and the automated maintenance simplify your job. The next pillar is business anywhere. And this one is all about flexibility. So all of us are quote unquote plugged in at all hours of the day, right? I think it's a natural desire to stay highly, to want to stay highly productive, you know, since we're always plugged in. No matter where you are, you know, whether it's the office, home, in your car, grabbing a quick coffee, or even traveling. So I usually get a lot of groans from workshop audiences when I'm doing Office 365 workshops when I start to bring up connecting to company email and files from your home or on the road. So it goes something like this. You find an internet connection. You launch your VPN client. Of course, it doesn't want to open. So you reboot your computer three times and you try again. Oh, and great, this time it actually opens. You try and connect with your special VPN password. Of course, it's different than your regular password. You try a few times, you fail a few times to log in, and then finally you get connected, and it's kind of slow. So contrast that with Office 365. There's no VPNs, there's no hoops to jump through. It's really a pretty simple setup. Step one, connect to the internet. Step two, log in using the same username and password that you use for everything else, since you only have one to manage. And step three, get stuff done. Step four, profit. So that was a little joke. Seriously, though, you don't need 
Office 365 software installed anywhere either. You can do all of this through a browser using Office 365 web apps. And in addition, you can even connect via tablets and smartphones with or without Office 365 installed. So Microsoft has made a strong push to deliver a consistent experience across all your devices, no matter how you access Office 365. And you can see an example of that by looking at the Microsoft Office Word interface shown here between a local version, the web app, and even the mobile app. So you have consistent buttons, you have the same kind of options on the ribbon, and you have a cohesive user interface across all the platforms, which is really, really important so that you can dive in and stay productive and not try to learn different systems. So next are the safeguards that are built into every Office 365 tenant. And again, this is about keeping your life simple, but moreover, I think it's about leveraging power. It's about leveraging the power of scale that Microsoft can use to detect new forms of malware, viruses, and spam, and block them quickly. So there's a ton of companies and a ton of users in the Office 365 environment, and based on the data there that Microsoft can leverage, they're able to put that to use in order to block these types of malicious attacks. And the power that you hold in your hands to quickly, and when I say quickly, I mean really quickly, track and view reports on spam and malware detections, quarantined emails, and even individual mailbox access attempts by non-owners is pretty incredible. So let's take a look at that. Here you can see some of the report data. Uh, you're able to filter and slice data selections by type of detection, uh, or just focus on sent and receive email if that's what you want to look at. There's a lot of flexibility here. Um, and it really naturally extends into flexibility of configuration of these tools themselves. So for example, you're able to block emails that come from certain countries or certain IP addresses. Uh, you can deploy custom allow or custom block lists, and you can decide where spam goes and how your end users get notified about that spam. So you can really tailor these systems to your company's policies, or you can decide really what's the best for your end users, maybe depending on how technically savvy they may be. So the final pillar of modern biz is probably the most important from your business's point of view, and this is selling. It's connecting with your customers. This is where Office 365 really shines in allowing you to reach both colleagues and customers in a smarter way. So this probably sounds familiar. Who ends up sending document attachments back and forth via email? You know, when you add a comma to a document, you have to save a new copy of the file. You maybe add a V2 on the end for version two and then you reply to the email chain and you attach the file. And this happens over and over and over again. What a nightmare. So Office 365's collaboration tools quickly help you overcome these issues and this particular issue. So instead of using the old method, what you do is you store your files in SharePoint Online or OneDrive for Business, just like you would in your My Documents folder or on your desktop if you're still saving files there. Then when you go to attach those files to an email, Outlook automatically knows that it's stored in Office 365 in the cloud. And instead of sending the file, it just sends a link to the document. And you can even adjust who has permissions to use that file right from the email when you attach it. And now everyone is actually working off of the same copy, off of one copy of the file. And all of your changes are tracked. So it might be a little bit easier to see this in action. So here we're gonna see opening up a new email addressing that email to who we want to share our file with. We'll enter a subject and a message. And now we're going to attach our file. And this is a file that's stored in Office 365. And you can notice the little cloud icon there. And then we can easily set permissions. We want to just allow the recipients to view. So we'll choose that. And that's it. You send your message and you're done. So it's very, very easy to use. So now we'll move into talking about managing identity. So earlier, we talked about the pain of making you remember multiple credentials, logins and passwords and which one to use where, ensuring people do or don't have access to systems. These are the kinds of things that I mean by managing identity. So what this diagram shows, and it's a little bit complex, but the basic takeaway is, is that it's, 
it's simple to manage identity in Office 365. And that's because of one major feature, and it's called single sign-on or same sign-on, and we call it SSO for short. And it solves that pesky problem of having to remember multiple passwords, but it goes even further than that. What if you could log into Office 365 and then access all of your other software and applications with a single click, no additional logon needed? So that's what I call leveraging Office 365 to its full potential. And there's support for a lot of applications, like NetSuite, ServiceNow, DocuSign, Adobe, ADP, CDW, and more. There's actually built-in SSO support for over 2,500 applications. So now, when a user logs into Office 365, they'll see the application shortcuts available to them right on their landing page, and with one simple click, they can access those systems. So this is really, really nice for end users, but for me, well, I'm a geek and I'm an IT manager, so I also care about a great experience from my perspective, from the IT side and from the management side. So when an employee leaves the company, single sign-on allows me to disable access to all of those integrated applications at once with one click of a button. So since we're using a single account and password for each user to access Office 365 as well as all of those other applications, now we just have that one account to disable when somebody leaves and we can be sure that access to our hosted financial software, our customer relations databases, for example, are all blocked. This is really awesome for seasonal employees too because it makes the process painless to turn their access on and off to a bevy of different applications with a few clicks. So self-service is also a buzzword that's been popular for the last few years and with the transition to the cloud accelerating. And so another example of helping the end user and making IT folks lives easier is self-service password resets. So everyone is probably used to resetting their password for Facebook or LinkedIn when you forget it, but you might wonder why you can't do that for your computer and for your, your work account, your domain account. It seems pretty obvious that this should be possible. And now you're able to offer this functionality for your users. So Self-service reduces the volume of help desk tickets. You have less people asking the help desk for simple password resets, which in turn reduces your help desk costs. So just as important, you don't lose productivity when you can't get logged in late at night because you have the ability to reset your own password. Plus, even better for me, I don't have to go and pause my Netflix movie, go to my computer and log into the company server just to reset your password for you at 11 p.m. at night. So this is really fantastic for everybody. So here's an example of the reset password wizard that a user would see if they needed to reset their password. And you can see here that it's still secure because they've added a second factor of authentication in order to verify the user's identity. So they either need to uh, supply a code that they received through a text message sent to their mobile phone or via a phone call or even an email to an alternate address. So um, you're giving them the ability to reset their password, stay productive, but you're not really giving up anything in security. And of course, I don't think you should just blindly accept everything that I'm telling you today. So let's see the amazing strides that Microsoft has made in Gartner's identity and access management as a service magic quadrant. So I think most of you are probably familiar with Gartner. And if we take a look here, it's pretty incredible that Microsoft is surpassing solutions that have been on the market for three or four times as long. Uh, so I think this really highlights all of the core principles of Office 365, the simplicity, the flexibility, the power, and the reach. So um, you can see here they're the farthest right, um, showing completeness of vision, and they're only um, second to Okta in terms of ability to execute. But I would say give it another six to 12 months, and they're probably going to be the leader in both of those categories. So we'll change gears now. And if you haven't heard the term bring your own device or BYOD, you might have been living under a rock or on Mars. So let us know how that's going for you. So there are benefits of BYOD for both the individual user and the company as a whole. From the company's perspective, this reduces corporate equipment costs. You don't need to purchase a standardized device for everyone. And employees, well, they get to use devices that they already own and that they're already comfortable with. But of course, there's also a lot of challenges on the IT and management side of the bring your own device craze. 
So questions that people usually ask pretty quickly are, well, how do you secure devices that you don't physically control? How do you prevent corporate data leakage? And how do you handle lost or stolen devices, which we touched on earlier? So the concept of mobile device management, or MDM, answers all of these questions. So you may not have heard of Microsoft Intune or Microsoft Enterprise Mobility and Security, also known as EMS, before, but I would bet that everyone's probably heard of BlackBerry. And what made BlackBerry such a major force in the mid to late 2000s was the idea of mobile device management, and BlackBerry was way ahead of its time. Unfortunately, as we all know, they didn't continue to innovate quickly enough, and so they're no longer a big player. But today, Office 365 natively provides mobile device management, or MDM, and it works across many different types of smartphones and mobile operating systems. EMS, Enterprise Mobility and Security, takes it even a step further with advanced functionality and support for managing full-blown workstations and Windows desktop operating systems. So it's really the true MDM of the 21st century. And that's all fine and good, but what does it let us do? So EMS and Intune, they do a lot of different things. One of those things is that they let us create a sandbox on the mobile device in which corporate mobile applications and their data are stored and run separately from any personal applications and data on your smartphone. And this is really important for a couple of reasons. So first, it unlocks the ability for you to manage how data is securely shared between corporate and personal apps. So think about opening a financial document on your phone to check a few figures. Do you want to let a user cut and paste data from that document into the notepad on their phone or into a personal email? Do you want to let them save that document down to their phone's internal storage or a personal Dropbox or Box.com account? Probably not. And now with EMS and Intune, you can restrict that behavior. So second, it allows remote wipe and selective wipe of mobile devices. So I've experienced the joy and pain of this feature and its power. And thinking back, we asked, what do you do when a disgruntled employee is fired or resigns but doesn't show up for work for a proper offboarding procedure? So I'm no lawyer, but I know that there's some legal gray area in terms of bring your own device and completely wiping an end user's personal device, including all their baby photos, their favorite MP3s, et cetera, et cetera. And, you know, unless they've signed waivers, but I don't know how common that is, um, especially in the SMB space, there's some gray area. But it's still nice to have the ability to completely wipe a device in case there's sensitive corporate information on it, of course, that you don't want falling into the wrong hands. But on the other hand, you really don't want to have to deal with stoking the flames of anger or emotion that a disgruntled employee may already be feeling by killing all of their personal data. So what can you do? Well, if you think back, if the corporate apps and data are in two completely separate containers and the corporate apps are separated from the personal apps and data, well, now we have the ability to perform what's called a selective wipe of the corporate information only without touching any of the personal data. So now there's no more gray area, you've avoided causing further issues with the individual in question, and for you and your company, it's really a crisis averted. So you can go ahead and pat yourself on the back. This is really also great for troubleshooting. So if something's not working right on someone's personal device with the corporate apps or their connection to corporate email, you can easily just run a selective wipe, delete all that corporate information without affecting any of their personal data or their, the setup of their personal phone, and start over again, and, and most times, things will just start working for you. So aside from these great features, you can also automatically deploy connection profiles, which make it really easy for employees to connect to company VPN or company Wi-Fi securely without having to type in a bunch of server names and other information. The profiles and all of that connection info are already on the phone. You've already pushed that out centrally to them. And if you're going to give your users the power to be productive from their personal devices, you should also, of course, make sure that they're taking appropriate steps to keep their phones and the data safe. And so you can also enforce PIN codes and device encryption, for example, before you allow them access to any corporate information, for example, corporate email. So you can see an example here of the security that will be enforced if a user opts to connect to corporate email on their mobile device. It's telling them that they're going to need to set a PIN code and that they're going to need to enable device encryption. 
and it's a wizard based setup which makes it very easy they don't need to be an IT person or technically you know tech savvy in order to do this it'll walk them through it and at the end it'll grant them access to the cor to the corporate email or whatever type of resource they were trying to to access and so that really leads us into our next discussion which is security <laughs> and I know I've touched on security a few times or maybe even more than that but let's look at how you want to stay protected both in and outside the office. So since Office 365 is in the cloud, we would expect it to be a secure cloud. And it is, otherwise companies wouldn't really be flocking to it. But what I want and what you should really demand is advanced protection, you know, something more. And so early on, we talked about Microsoft leveraging the power of scale, just the vast number of users that are in the Office 365 ecosystem to react to malicious spam and malware and new forms of malware. So Microsoft has huge data sets to work with. They can apply machine learning, which is very cool 21st century technology, and voila, you get quick reactions to the spread of spam and malware. But what about zero day threats? You don't want to be the person who gets infected with a brand new unknown form of virus, lose important data, or even worse, possibly cause catastrophic damage to shared data on network drives. So I know what you're thinking. You really were expecting a package from UPS or FedEx and you skipped your morning cup of coffee and opened that email attachment before your brain could tell you that probably wasn't a great idea. But no worries because you have advanced threat protection. So let's take a look at that. So when that email with the malicious attachment hits Microsoft servers, it wasn't seen as a known threat because it's a brand new type of attack. It's a zero day threat. But something didn't seem right about it. It was suspicious. Probably the fact that it's rare for an email to arrive from that particular domain with an attachment at all. And so next, just like a remote controlled bomb squad robot would elegantly or at least safely defuse a bomb, Office 365 and Azure team up automatically on the back end. They grab and execute that attachment in a temporary environment or a sandbox, which is far, far away from your computer. And they run heuristics to see exactly what the attachment's trying to do when it's running. So once it determines that this particular attachment wanted to do something malicious, and there's various ways it does that, but usually it's by trying to force an escalation of privilege. It's by trying to run something as an administrator. Office 365 would then strip that attachment and it would notify you, the recipient of its action. And yes, this does cause a brief delay from the message hitting your inbox, but believe me, it's worth the extra five minutes before you receive that questionable email that there's, <clears throat> and there's nothing new or extra that you have to do differently and to know that you're protected. So the same thing goes for links in an email. So the example that we just talked about is the suspicious attachment uh, workflow, but it also works the same as with this malicious link workflow. So we've all clicked the link that doesn't end up taking us where we thought and where we expected to go. And advanced threat protection will actually prevent an end user from clicking and following a fake or forged link that leads to a known malicious website. So it's additional layers of security for you and your end users. And even better, of course, we can report on all of this. So we can find out which user or department has tried to click on the most unsafe links. And it would probably be time to schedule some additional training for those folks on safe internet usage and email usage and browsing. So next is multi-factor authentication. And we got a little taste of that when we were looking into the self-service password reset. And you have the ability to enforce multi-factor authentication a lot of different ways, but at its core, the idea is really to strengthen the authentication mechanism to keep unauthorized users and hackers out of your systems. Because when you think about it, what do a lot of people do with passwords? And especially when they're required to change their passwords frequently, they write them down. So using passwords alone isn't very secure. But once you require a second form of verification, a second factor, then access control becomes a lot stronger. So you can deliver the second factor as we saw via a phone call, a text message, and you can even use the brand new Microsoft Authenticator app, which runs right on your smartphone. And you just open up that app and you type in the temporary code that it gives you in addition to your regular password when you wanna to connect to Office 365. And now 
it's easy to gain access, but it's also far more secure than a password alone. And finally, making e-discovery and data loss prevention easy to deploy and administer really is going to allow you to stay compliant and vastly reduce the probability of intellectual property loss and litigation headaches in general. So every company should ensure that they have a data retention policy that's designed to ensure cost-effective compliance with e-discovery rules, which every company is subject to. But most companies don't follow through with the execution for two main reasons. First, it's complicated. I mean, I think probably the sentence that I just spoke sounds pretty complicated, and it is. And number two, it's expensive. But with Office 365, we make it easy, and in most cases, it's already built in. There's no extra cost. And honestly, it's so easy that you can set up a litigation hold or in-place hold, as they're known in Office 365, in less than 10 minutes. And I'm not joking. It's that simple. So if you're interested in a deep dive into e-discovery with Office 365, please go ahead and search our website from a uh, previous webinar on this topic, or just let us know in the chat if you're interested and we can send the link over to you. So in terms of data loss prevention, or DLP as it's known, uh, we talked about the sensitive data, the intellectual property that every company has. And uh, you know, those can be you know, engineering blueprints or um, you know, patient health information. Uh, credit card data, social security numbers, new product code names, you know, or, or anything else that you can think of. So Office 365 has out-of-the-box templates that are ready for you to get started with, and they cover a lot of different common compliance and related data sets. And if you take a look here, uh, you can see everything from PCI to PII to HIPAA and more and more. And it's really this simple. It's a wizard-based setup that you just need to click through and select the types of data you'd like to protect, um, which systems you'd like to protect, and the scope of users that you'd like to apply the policy to, and hit done, and it's good to go. So if a user were to try to email uh, a social security number or HIPAA information uh, to someone outside of the company, uh, Outlook and Exchange would stop them from actually being able to send that email. And again, just like everything else, you're able to report on that information. And so you can very easily keep tabs on uh, repeat offenders, for example, that may need to be retrained. So migration. You've been looking into Office 365. Uh, and if you're not already using it, you're hopefully ready to make the move. And so we try and keep this simple as well. To begin with, you choose a migration style that suits your budget and your timeline. So there are quicker migrations called cutover migration, where all users go live or are cut over to Office 365 at the same time. So this type of migration is appropriate for smaller organizations or those companies who want to accelerate adoption of Office 365. And the second option is a hybrid migration. This is better suited for larger organizations or those companies that want to move to the cloud at a slower pace or possibly require extensive testing or use of pilot groups as part of their deployment process. And for the most part, we talk about these migration styles you know, in terms of your email migration. So for either migration scenario, uh, you're able to leverage tools that allow for multiple past data migrations, which ensures that all of your data gets migrated, nothing gets left behind, even if it's completed in chunks um, and done in such a way that we're not overwhelming your internet connection. There's also error logic and retry logic that's built in so that you don't have to babysit the process and continually restart it if there's an error. So you can see an example of the workflow of the migration styles here. Uh, and that, for example, the cutover migration is a, is a simpler approach to migrate all your data at the same time um, and cut over all users at the same time. While the hybrid style is more complex, um, it introduces coexistence between your current email system and Office 365 in order to give you more control over that migration process and more control over the timeline, how quickly you want to move your entire organization to Office 365. So for other types of data, shared file data, CRM, SharePoint, voice over IP solutions, business intelligence, reporting, and any other data silos, you really have complete control over how and when you move them to Office 365. The beauty is that you don't have to go all in right away if you don't want to. So we can help you design a customized and flexible approach to adopting Office 365 
to ensure end user buy-in, which is critical to the overall success of the project. So for most companies, this means an email migration up front, followed by additional phases to migrate or roll out other Office 365 based solutions. Uh, like I had mentioned before, CRM, SharePoint, voice over IP, business intelligence, et cetera. So really, the best part is greater control over your costs for common IT services, and in general, realizing an overall reduction in IT spending on those services. Office 365 is packaged as bundled licenses, gives you access to a lot of different solutions for a lower cost than purchasing all of those one by one and you only purchase the amount of licenses that you need for your employee headcount right now. You can go up and grow as you need, and plus you can mix and match which bundles or add-ons you want, and you just simply add as you grow. So if you are ready to jump in and try out Office 365 for yourself, I encourage you to sign up for a free trial on our website. You can uh, just take a note of the link below and that'll take you to the form to fill out the request and get your free trial. And it's a fully functional trial, so you can create accounts, you can tinker with any and all of the applications and services, and you can really get a feel for the power of Office 365. And our technical consultants uh, here at FMT are happy to discuss your current and future needs um, and even schedule in-depth and tailored demos at your office if you want to see more. And you can feel free to call me or um, email me if you're interested, or you can always submit your request uh, through our website. And um, I'll have my contact information on the last slide when we get to the end. And I saw a few questions come up during the webinar, so we'll go ahead and uh, cover those, and I'll do my best to answer them. And thanks for attending. Uh, my contact information is on this final slide, and I want to draw your attention to our session on Azure, break up with your on-premise server and fall in love with Azure uh, from 1 to 2 p.m. So if you are free, I think you definitely get a lot of benefit from that as well. So once again, thank you for attending.